there's a lot of different ways to interpret the numbers that we're seeing. You know, uh, there's a uh, polling in the Wall Street Journal today that suggests that um, independents are starting to favor uh, Biden and the Democrats. And, and, and the reasons would be a combination of the January 6th hearing, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and the fact that the Democrats, and again, I think for folks who listen to this show, feel like it has been uh, insufficient. But from the perspective of, you know, uh, independent, so-called independent voters who tend to be low information and really uh, just want to see some type of action. The storyline for Biden has been he's been racking up wins, which, you know, that is the way that a lot of people make their decisions on politics, sadly to say. Winning all over the place. But but those wins, you know, I think for for folks around here would be just slightly better than a tie. But a slightly better than a tie is better than slightly worse than a tie. And the. Forgiving $10,000 worth of uh, college debt has been, by all accounts, very successful politically. The uh, getting the 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 benefits in that package uh, associated with Medicare and Medicaid and uh, drug prices and uh, the uh, sort of uh, build back a bit uh, bill, essentially has been positive, at least insofar as that they've gotten credit for doing something. But there are other places I've been reading where they say, you know, uh, the, the places where it appears that Democrats have made gains is also where we have found some uh, failure of the polls to capture what the real numbers were in 2020, which is why people overestimated how well Democrats would do. So I don't know. You pick it. But one of the things that's clear is that the Supreme Court is increasingly becoming an issue for Democratic voters. And if I had my druthers, this would have happened 18 years ago. Well, 25 years ago, frankly, 30 years ago. But um, the courts are incredibly important, and we see that increasingly every day, and we're going to see it even more so in the uh, in, in the coming uh, weeks, months, and years. Here's Al Franken making a very strong case that the legitimacy of the Supreme Court has sunk, and this is going to be important because these ty- as as this stuff seeps into the mainstream or the conventional wisdom, or the Washington uh, Beltway elite, as it were, it's going to open up the door to things like filibuster reform and reforming the Supreme Court. Here is uh, Al Franken debating uh, with the CNN's, is it CNN's Alice Stewart? But she's like a, like a well, CNN is really <laughs> very quickly turning into essentially uh, a Republican um uh, an all Republican. Yeah, Fox News. Yeah, sort of the never Trump or Republican type of thing. I mean, to outdo MSNBC. It's probably a good thing because maybe MSNBC will have some challenges to their entire uh, contributor staff. But she also worked for Mike Huckabee's, two of Mike Huckabee's presidential. Oof. Okay. Yep. Only the best, though. Here's uh, Franken. And the legitimacy of the court was undermined when they wouldn't take up Merrick Garland. And you'll remember that McConnell said it was because it was during election year. And you remember Lindsey Graham pledging that if a vacancy came uh, came open during election year in uh, 20, that he wouldn't vote for, um, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't take up a nominee. They've stolen two seats. The one that Merrick Garland uh, wasn't given a hearing for, and the one that Coney Barrett was uh, where she was seated a week before the election. That destroyed the legitimacy of the court. Alice, what do you think? Did, did Chief Justice Roberts sort of, I mean, he sort of uh, ignored some of what Al is talking about there and that there is I mean, a, 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 a tremendous amount of controversy uh, as to how this court got tilted in the direction of the far right. Just to... to- throw a little accuracy in, in some of what, what Al said there. Look, the, the Merrick Garland 
was held up because we had a divided government. We had a Democrat in the White House, and we had Republicans in control of. That's not of, what was said. Of, that's not of, what McConnell was said. But but that's the way historically this has been. When you're in close to an election no, year and you no, have divided that's government, not the yes, way it's been yes, historically done. Yes, and when you, when you have divided government, there typically is a inclination to tell me uh, what has happened to, before. When you. you when Tell me what happened to an, before. When you're, well, Merrick Garland uh, is certainly one. When there's a divided government. No, before they're Merrick Garland. They're, they're moving, they're not moving forward. When Tell me what has government. happened before. Uh, Al, I'm telling you, this is what the, uh, Mitch Tell McConnell me what has happened before. I, I, I can't. You said this is what happened case. historically. Tell me what had happened before. Look, this is the way that the Republicans when? Uh, went, went, like, I can't give you an exact example of when this happened no, in the because, past. No, you know why I you can't? You. Because it hadn't happened before. I mean, <laughs> this is the thing is that, like, the, what are the fundamental uh, uh, differences like with uh, right wing and left wing pundits? Now, now, Franken also, I have to say, is I have always found him to be incredibly uh, knowledgeable about stuff. I haven't always necessarily agreed with all of his politics, um, but um, but he's extremely intelligent and knowledgeable. I, I, I uh, said on day one that he became a senator. He was in the top five percent, probably maybe eight percent. It's easy to do the math there, uh, uh, but uh, to, maybe they're just in the top, yeah, five, eight percent of senators who knew what they were talking about, about anything. And um, he also was in the Senate at that time, if I remember correctly, or pretty close. And uh, they just go out with their talking points and never even do the slightest bit of like, should I read? Like, I'm just doing the top line. I don't need the, the, the second paragraph. And because in the, in this instance, there wasn't. Uh, I mean, that is really the point, is that like the the credibility of the court and John Roberts can get out there and whine about it all he wants. Credibility as a court is uh, um, uh, really in shambles. And it's going to be interesting to see if they ever release that report. Gorsuch claims they will about uh, the leak. Um, but I mean, we'll see. But yes, all of this is important because the more that people understand, and really this should have happened after nine, after the, the 2000 election, but didn't because of 9-11. Understanding what the court is and how uh, the right has begun to use this court is, I think, crucial to understanding where we are and where we're going to be in the next couple of years of our politics. And by couple, I mean like two decades, unless something is done. Um, speaking of 9-11, I'll have a couple words on it uh, maybe at the end of the show today. Um, don't have too much to say, but uh, I did see a, an interesting uh, interview that I think may have been even a year old with Paul Jay, who is um, the, the guy who found uh, the Real News uh, Network. I don't think he's there anymore at that place, but um, he, um, he had a good dissertation of all the stuff that like sort of summarized the first couple of years that I was on radio, frankly, <laughs> we talk about, and it's worth reminding everybody.